The honorary degree will now be conferred. Dr. Clayman, will you present the honorary degree candidate, Judy Payette? Uh, Mr. Chancellor, each generation produces a few individuals who come to serve as exemplars of talent, intelligence, industry, and courage. Julie Payette is one such individual. She's undertaken an amazing quest, one that has stirred the hearts of all Canadians. It's with great pleasure and with pride that I present her to you today. Julie Payette's achievements give fresh credence to Aristotle's words, excellence is not a work of art, it's only a habit. In <laughs> Indeed, excellence is a habit that Ms. Payette developed very early in life. An exceptional student in science and engineering, she received many top honors at McGill University and the Univers University of Toronto, including the Greville Smith uh, Scholarship, a Massey College Fellowship, and an NSERC Postgraduate Scholarship. Julie Payette's professional successes add further luster to her sterling academic record. Her research activities are many and include natural language processing and automatic speech recognition. At IBM Canada, she worked as a systems engineer. Later at Bell Northern, she studied the human computer interaction and artificial intelligence. In June 1992, she was selected as an astronaut by the Canadian Space Agency as one of four recruits out of over 5,000 candidates. She, in the Space Agency, she worked as a technical advisor for the mobile servicing system, established the human computer interaction group at the Canadian astronaut program, and served as a technical specialist in the NATO International Research Study Training Program. She was on the Council of NSERC, on whose strategic planning task force we both served. On May 27, 1999, she, she boarded the Space Shuttle Discovery on mission STS-96 and made history as the first Canadian to participate in the International Space Station assembly mission and to board the space station itself. I had the privilege of being there for the launch on that warm Florida morning. It was a thrilling experience for me, but I'm sure nowhere near as thrilling as it was for her. <laughs> on the shuttle mission itself, Julie Payette brought honor not only to herself but to her country. Her expertise in robotics, artificial intelligence, and the complex human-machine interface was critical to the success of the mission, demonstrating to the world the contributions of Canada and Canadians to the international space efforts. Like many exceptional people, Julie Payette has many talents. A skilled pilot who obtained her captaincy on military jet aircraft, she's also sung with world-class choirs. She's a scuba diver and, and speaks five languages and plays the piano. One of, her, one of her most outstanding qualities, however, is her willingness to take the time to share her knowledge and experience with others. In 1995, our Women in Science group invited her to speak to female students in science and engineering. A strong advocate of the role of women in these disciplines, she accepted immediately and made an eloquent presentation about the importance of realizing one's own potential to the fullest. Mr. Chancellor, it seems most appropriate to me that this university, whose namesake himself brave new frontiers, should confer on Julie Payette the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Julie Payette. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Clausa. Dr. Payette will be hooded by Dr. Bruce Clayman, Vice President of Research. That was an unprecedented event. <laughs> it was 
the first time we've had a standing ovation for an honorary degree recipient. I'm very pleased. I'm sure Dr. Payet is too. I now call on her to give her convocation address. I'm not as tall as he is. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Needless to say, this is uh, quite an occasion. Thank you very much for, for your welcome. It is uh, both an honor and a privilege to be back at Simon Fraser University in this beautiful city. And of course, the weather has been commanded to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, before I, I start talking to you for a few minutes, uh, I, I have to say one thing, is that uh, most of the time, me being just an engineer, I'm not very good with words. So I usually borrow them from other people who write them better than I do. And I had a quote prepared, and that was a quote by Aristotle about excellence. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruce took it away from me. I'll serve it to you anyway. <laughs> it is a, a real privilege, and I'll tell you why. Um, it is amazing for me to stand in front of you, and I humbly stand in front of you today, to talk to you and, and also to receive a, a doctorate degree honoris causa. Why? Who am I to you? I don't even hail from this part of the world, even though I wish. I haven't lived here. I haven't studied in this mighty institution. But you're welcome today and the way you bring people in, no matter what, shows that it doesn't matter. What matters is what you do. All people dream of what they might do one day. Let it be climb a mountain, write a book, win a Nobel Prize, graduate with distinction, learn a language, fly in space. It doesn't matter. These dreams make us better. They give us a purpose. They improve us individually and as a group. They're the things we stand for, the things that make us go beyond and accomplish things a little bit beyond everyday life. But these dreams, every single one that we have, they don't come up magically. One has to work for them. One has to tackle this, this challenge head on and find out, figure out ways of overcoming those challenges. And for this, it takes imagination, it takes ambition, it takes will. Will. Will to go further. Will to look beyond, look, and will to put effort into the things. And the belief, the belief that with steady work and determination, one can accomplish great things. But that's not all. You can have the will, but you need the tools. And you can give yourself the tools, the tools to accomplish something, the tools to tackle the challenge, the tools to open the doors and to create the opportunities because they don't come magically. And those tools as well that will enable you to understand and tools that will enable you to execute. And the greatest tool of all is education. In this institution, you, the young people, are now preparing a life with education. It is the greatest gift you can give yourself. By training ourselves, we give ourselves capability, resourcefulness, choices. And by training ourselves, we protect ourselves from error. And we actually can stand a chance. But all, in all of this, it's a mistake. It's a total mistake to think that we can do anything alone. It's not true. It never will be true. We are the product, and our biggest strength resides in teamwork, cooperation, and our belonging to community. In space, that is the case every day. We don't go to space alone. We go to space as part of a team. And we go to space because thousands of people on the ground have prepared the space mission, the vehicle, and make sure that everything goes well while we're up there in the hostile environment. Teamwork, cooperation, without which it would not work. Belonging to the community, bringing something out of the community, bringing something back into the community. 
It's easy. But maybe last but not least, no matter how glorious the fleeting moment may be when we cross the finish line, when we think we've made it, then we have to stop and think that it never ends. The quest for knowledge you can't attain. It's always out there. There's always a challenge, something else to do, a new goal, a new dream, a new desire. And that you have to continue always striving for that goal. And perhaps the most important ingredient of it all, the most important ingredient to success, is humility. Humility to realize that you never know better, that you never know at all, that you never will, and that you have to keep on searching, keep on asking, keep on your toes. And the worst is that some people in this room probably know better than me. The more you know, the more ignorant you feel, because you discover an, a world out there that has so much to offer. And that no matter what, there's always room for improvement. I once heard somebody say that the greatest obstacle to progress was the illusion of knowledge. Thinking we know it all. And in the space business, we think we know it all. People ask all the time, why do we go back? Why do we go to space? We've been there. Why do we go back to the moon? Oh gosh, we've been there a mere six times in our lives. 25 years ago and more. Why do we go back? Because we still have things to discover. And if I knew what, then we would not be searching, right? In the aerospace business currently, we are undertaking perhaps the most challenging engineering project ever undertaken in a hostile environment. The construction of the International Space Station, a new platform, a laboratory where people will live for several months at a time, going around the Earth 400 kilometers above the surface every 90 minutes. It is a fantastic challenge because 20 nations are putting effort resource people together to build a station in a very hostile environment. In space, there's nothing up there. There's no Home Depot. <laughs> there's no pressure. There's no air. There's no food store. And we're collaborating, 20 different nations, to build this new laboratory. Why? To learn more, to push the boundary of knowledge and understanding to grow, to progress all together. And for the first time in the history of people, we do this in a peaceful manner. Because, you see, space and physics is against our tendency to want to say, this is mine, this is yours, and don't touch my stuff. Because in space, when you're on orbit around the Earth, it's immuable movement. You can't stop the spaceship. You can't plant a flag and say, it's mine goes on and on. So you have to collaborate. You have to get together. And anyway, it won't work. And we, the people, the really lucky ones, to get to go and fly, to get to be the construction workers, to participate in a minute way to this fantastic endeavor. We, the flyers, the astronauts, we're always amazed by the extent of the achievement. When you think that 30 years ago, it was still only a dream, that going to the moon was still something that many people didn't believe in. And still today, we haven't been very far. But when you go up 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth and you see this incredible planet of ours, then you realize to which extent it is formidable. It is so beautiful. It's extraordinary. It's unique. And there's only one of it. Planet Earth, as seen from space, is grandiose, magnificent, and fragile. Canada is luscious, green, vast, and empty. And it makes you realize that, basically, planet Earth currently is our spaceship. Is our common spaceship, us, six billion or so? Or is it seven now? 
our spaceship, it is the place, the only place where we can live. And it strikes you plain in the forehead when you see it from above, traveling at 25 times the speed of sound. But the amazement doesn't stop there. It comes also with our very nature. We, the people of the Earth, are bound by the nature of exploration. We always want to go further. We always want to run faster, to climb the highest mountain, to fly higher. It will never stop. We cannot turn our backs to challenge. It's been so before, it will be so in the future. It's an intrinsic desire, compelling desire, to know more, to push further. And there will be no stopping. When we decide not to invest in research and development, when we decide not to participate in international endeavor, when we decide not to put funding into our education system and into our technology programs, then we just decide to stall while others will continue. But you, the young people here, there's no reason for you to miss the boat. You've got it all in front of you. All you've got to do is to dare to dream. Hold on to your vision. And every day, mold yourself and who you want to be. And to quote <laughs> Aristotle <laughs> on this, because it is so pointy, is that indeed excellence is not an art. Uh, actually, it is an art won by habituation and training. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, it's a habit. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Julie, Dr. Payette, for an inspiring, beautiful speech.